So, well, I will bring you, let's say, a more industrial presentation than the Oliver's presentation. Uh, first of all, hello, everyone. I am Adrià Ferran. I'm the CTO and founder of Comux. Comux uh, is a company that was born at the University of Barcelona uh, seven years ago, if I'm not wrong, when I was studying, uh, the, let's say, the, the, the PhD I, I hold. And uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to explain what uh, our company does. Uh, I have prepared this 10 minute uh, more or less presentation. So if you have any questions, we can comment at the end. Uh, but anyway, you can interrupt me as you wish. I don't I don't mind. So. I will start showing you an image of an office with a classic lighting system. Uh, where you can see the exterior, which has a uh, dynamic light while the interior is all completely static. So the idea of Comux is to send the data to the lighting control company to convert the static lighting system into an autonomous dynamic system without user intervention on the dynamic behavior of the light, uh, providing CCT and brightness control uh, as a standard, which adapts to the dynamism of the exterior lighting. Um, the, the final goal of this functionality is to increase uh, worker productivity in an office, improve patient recovery in hospitals, make students in a classroom uh, get better grades or reduce the number of falls in a nursing home. So at Comux we offer uh, software services in form of uh, data directly linked to control systems and giving logic to smart lighting systems and uh, on a practical level this means that uh, the user of a building will not have to worry about manually changing the lighting uh, in this building but the user will enjoy the benefits of natural light because uh, Comux constantly controls the lighting levels and hues and needed to have this um, advantage in spaces like uh, schools, hotels, uh, offices or hospitals, among others. And I think this is important. Uh, users are at the center of our product design, so uh, we provide an automated and this is a very important word for us solution for them so that they only have to turn the light on and off like a normal switch to experience the, the fuel benefit of, of our solution. The general idea of the technology is to create a positive impact on people's uh, health and well-being. And theoretically, we follow the principles of uh, the so-called uh, human-centric lighting. And I don't like this concept, but anyway, which uh, considers these three verticals, the visual, the emotional and the biological vertical. Um, firstly, the visual part is related to the quality of the light we receive uh, from the point of view of image formation. It refers to the definition of the objects we can see and the color rendering quality of the object's colors, because it's not the same to observe, for example, the color of a car when sunlight is present, or for example, at night under yellow sodium illumination. And here uh, there are no mirrors metrics that we could talk about at length, for example, the classical CRI or the new uh, IESTM30. Uh, so secondly, we have the emotional part, usually related to the work of a lighting designer. And this part is related to the feelings uh, that, for example, a restaurant transmits to us when we enter. Uh, it is not the same to enter to a McDonald's, uh, for example, designed to have a lot of rotation and people uh, eating and living, than the lighting of a, uh, let's say, good restaurant usually with uh, much warmer colors, with luminaires located in a lower plane, etc. And this part varies greatly depending on the project. And finally, we have the circadian part, probably the least known for the for the great public, um, which is being the focus of the most recent lighting studies. I'm sure that you all know that it all started in 2001 when a group of scientists discovered that inside our eye, apart from the cones and rods, we had another type of photoreceptor cells called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells that are sensitive to the blue part of light uh, to simplify. These cells are linked to the segregation of certain hormones such as melatonin, which is uh, directly related to the regulation of circadian rhythms. So therefore, here we have a direct relationship between the light that hits our retina and the regulation of human circadian rhythms. And what are circadian rhythms? I'm sure that you all know, but anyway, uh, by definition, circadian rhythms are physical, mental and behavioral changes that follow a 24 hour cycle. And it turns out that having an imbalance in circadian rhythms that 
was this thing that Oliver was speaking right now, uh, can lead to serious health consequences such as different problems, an increase of the rate of obesity, increasing blood pressure, significant uh, reduction in the quality of sleep, uh, increase of stress, diabetes and depression in the elderly, increased risk of injuring athletes, increased risk of breast cancer in, in women, in nurses that uh, they are making shifts, for example. And these are just examples of, of what has been published in scientific articles in recent years. Basically, we base our algorithms on these four factors, uh, daytime, geolocation, activity and needs. The first one, daytime, uh, refers to the fact that a user can perform the same action at different times of the day for totally different purposes. Uh, I will give you an example. Uh, we can think of the action of taking a shower, for example, uh, during the morning, because when someone takes a shower in the morning, uh, they're looking for activation for the body to wake up and start the day with energy. And on the other hand, during the night, the opposite effect is wanted since we are thinking about going to sleep. And for this same action, we have very different lighting needs. Since in the morning, we will need a cold and powerful light uh, to activate us, while at night, we will need a warm and dim light to relax. The second factor is geolocation. And in this case, we can think of uh, the lighting needs of two people sharing similar time zones. For example, one located in New York and another one located in Buenos Aires. So uh, during the month of June at seven o'clock in the evening in New York, it is completely daylight since it is summer there, while in Buenos Aires it is already completely dark since it is winter. So the lighting needs of people living in different places are also different. The third factor is activity because the same person in the same location can plan activities as different as reading or physical activity. Uh, in the first case, this person will need a powerful light to help her or help him concentrate while maintaining a state of relaxation, while in the second case, this person will need an activation light. And finally, people's needs also change according to their profile, and the same activity uh, in the same place may require different lighting if the user is a child or an elderly person, because due to the passage of time, the eye undergoes a degeneration that uh, results in a need to increase the illuminance levels and correctly regulate the circadian rhythms uh, for older users. Here is how our system works. And we have developed a main cloud to cloud solution that can work locally offline as well, that connects uh, to the cloud of the control system. And in this case, we see how the information exchange system works, where we receive information such as the characteristics of the luminar, something like uh, the luminous flux, uh, energy consumption, spectrum, etc., and other parameters such as uh, the date, time, uh, geolocation, indoor location, etc. And we process all this information and return it so that the control system can use it to control the luminars. As an example, we can see that in this case, we return parameters that can be easily modulated by any control system, such as uh, CCT or brightness. And furthermore, depending on the information provided by the request, we can calculate parameters such as the CRI, the IES uh, TM30 method metrics or circadian parameters such as uh, circadian stimulus, MP rate or MDR, for example. Uh, and in addition, the solution we have developed takes into consideration standards such as the well-building standard, and we have an agreement with UL, and we are working closely on joint solutions with them. So to summarize, our solution uh, needs to enable wide luminars and a control system compatible with us. And at the control level, uh, we have major partners worldwide, uh, leaders in their respective uh, continents, in addition to control companies that use different wired or wireless protocols. And our intention in the short term is to focus on providing robustness to these integrations, since we consider that uh, we have a large enough network to reach any project anywhere in the world. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. And I just want to make one final point. Uh, as a company, we have a challenge, which is to scale something that is currently at a scientific level to make it uh, commercially viable and scale it up. Uh, we know that um, every project is different and we will be soon uh, launching new tools that will allow us to go beyond 
these assumptions we are doing right now and work with simulated data much closer to the, for example, illuminance levels of a particular project. So uh, now, yes, thank you very much for your attention and I'm open to questions. Thank you, uh, Aria. Very interesting uh, presentation and a very innovative approach to uh, uh, to uh, uh, go one level higher in in offering uh, 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 companies or uh, people who who manage facilities uh, actually to what you call uh, to uh, to offer uh, human centric lighting. I, I have a quick question. You said that the light should be. Uh, uh, your system is depending on daytime uh, geolocation. That, that, that's relatively simple, but also on activity and needs. Yeah. How do we determine the activity and needs? And is uh, yeah, here basically what we provide is is just to clarify uh, is different solutions. I mean. Everything uh, I mean, these four factors are packed inside, let's say one lighting curve that it depends on these on these factors. And for example, if you say that uh, you want, um, I don't know, uh, for example, to do a project in a gym uh, specialized for kids, for example, we will take all these into consideration in order to design, let's say, this this curve, this dynamic uh, scene in order to be applied in the in the luminars. OK, yeah, so it's 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 relatively static then the activity and the needs. It's it's for a specific company or organization. It's not that uh, in the morning I have this activity and, and in the evening I have another activity. And, and so it's not personal in that sense. It, it's more company oriented. Yes, yes, absolutely. And this I mean, this kind of uh, activities, we are trying to manage it using uh, switches uh, so you can turn and off, for example, our dynamic scenes or you can turn on and off, uh, let's say static scenes for specific purposes. For example, yeah. we are right now in a project related to a classroom for the university. Um, and here there's a challenge uh, to design different, let's say, dynamic and static scenes for different purposes. Because, for example, if the, if the teacher wants to make a presentation, then they need to dim the light uh, and some things happen here. Uh, also, um, well, control the, the daylight that is entering so we can balance the different brightness levels, etc. And uh, this is different that, for example, uh, let's say, uh, a normal day in class with all these students without presentations. OK, clear. Yeah, I see two hands. Uh, Sarah. Hi there. Thank you so much, Adria. I think uh, I think you guys know Dr. Chris Mason. Um, no, OK, uh, no. Uh, just just checking. You might we might know him in common, a researcher. Um, yeah, so I'm interested in what light sources you're using. Yeah, this is an interesting question because we are trying to use as much light sources as possible because we are creating like a small database. We have a huge database of LEDs uh, of the market, basically, because we needed that database to make uh, some uh, statistical studies about, for example, the circadian impact of different LEDs and, and see what is the ampere ratio, the MDR, different parameters. And uh, basically what we need is to enable white uh, luminaires. And here we have different layers because sometimes we can have the data, and I mean, for example, the spectrum of these to enable white luminaires, but sometimes not. And uh, if um, we can have this data, then we uh, can have better results because we can know exactly what is this potential circuit and impact of, of these luminaires. But uh, yeah, basically we need uh, to enable white luminaires with also brightness control. That is something very usual in these luminaires. OK, thank you. Um, oh. Yeah, uh, same I, yeah um, so then are you basically designing the lighting? Um, so the customer comes to you and says, we want to use this this light, can you design the lighting schedule 
that goes with this light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea here is let's let's see. We we want to enter at the very beginning of of a lighting project and sell the uh, let's say health approach directly to the client. And um, and basically what we do is to sell data to the control system. So uh, we are we have different partners, and uh, and basically we uh, control this control system. We update it with lighting different lighting profiles, so the user can have these dynamic scenes all day long if if they want to have it. Okay, I I see another question. Uh, Joachim raised his hand. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, Adrian. Uh, th uh, thanks for a lovely presentation. So I just have a question um, uh, with your system. Is it is it possible to sort of get insight into, for example, the melanopic EDI uh, sort of uh, uh, response curve? So I could, for example, use uh, good light groups uh, recommendations. Um, uh, or are you only using sort of CCT and Kelvin? Uh, and is there a reason why you mainly focus on the UL and not the alpha optic EDI, which is uh, European based? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it depends on on what data you provide. Let's say if you give us, for example, the uh, right now we are um, launching a new tool that will work with dialogue simulations. OK, so basically what we are trying to do right now is OK, you are sending us a dialogue simulation uh, with different levels of illuminance and and you say, OK, this is the spectrum of my of my luminar, for example, the warm, uh, let's say the warmest and the coldest uh, spectrum. And we can, let's say, make the simulation so everything fits. Now, if you want to follow this uh, certification and MEDI, for example, to have these uh, 10 lapses in the evening or whatever, and then we can have uh, this spectrum mixed with this dialogue simulation and calculate what is the MEDI, for example. Okay. So well, can everything I, can depends. I just use the, the new toolbox for that? Sorry? Can I just use the new toolbox for that, or is that is is it is it something special within your program that that it? Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand that. Yeah, we will we will release it in I hope in a month more or less. Okay. And it will be public as I think it will be public. Okay. Interesting. So you, you I don't know you will be able to play with it. I assume uh, we have to talk about the product team, but if you are interested, I'm sure that we can have a, a, an sure. arrangement. Sure. OK. Thank you, Joachim, for the questions. Thank you, Adria, for uh, the answers and your very interesting presentation. We wish you a, a lot of good luck and a welcome as participant to this group. Yeah, thank you. Thank so you if, if others have specific questions, please uh, contact Adria and um, you will uh, 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 get them, get all your questions answered. So we are reaching the uh, the end of our uh, 16th group meeting. Thank you very well uh, for uh, your presence. Uh, again, thanks to the speakers for uh, their presentations. And we'll meet again on the uh, 21st of November, same time uh, on a Tuesday, four o'clock. Thank you all.